Hey everybody, it's Joe from greenlightsound.com and today we're going to talk about the problem with audio company mergers, especially when larger companies buy smaller audio companies or several audio companies merge together into one sort of super group plugin developer or audio developer. Because what typically happens when this happens is you don't get added value from the merger, you actually lose out on some things and that's been happening a lot lately. I want to cover some of those things today. So on the screen right now, you're looking at three plugins that I have used before. The one I used the most out of these three is Trash 2 from Isotope. It's part of one of my vocal distortion parallel chains that I use. But you also see a couple of reverbs here from Exponential Audio, which was purchased by Isotope a little while back. You got the Nimbus and R4. And all three of these plugins have in common that they are now no longer supported, sold, or being developed at all by the company that runs them, Isotope. And this is happening a lot lately in the plugin world. So it's important that we discuss it and see what's going to happen if you own some of these plugins. One of the things we have to remember is it will still work on your system for now and will likely continue to work until you get an OS upgrade or a new system and these aren't supporting that anymore. So they will still work for now. You can keep them installed. You can use them for as long as you can, but the companies are ceasing development and you can't buy them new anymore. One of the biggest things in recent memory that's happened is that Gibson purchased Cakewalk and Cakewalk was a doll that a lot of engineers used. And Gibson bought Cakewalk in 2013. And this announcement from 2017 here, you can see Gibson Brands announcement regarding Cakewalk. They ceased active development and production of all Cakewalk branded products. So they basically bought the company and shut it down within a few years. Another big one happened just recently. Fender bought Presonus. Now this happened just one year ago. And we're still really not sure how this is going to pan out. Right now, Presonus still looks to be in pretty good shape. I use Studio One as my main doll, so I'm a little concerned about this, but hopefully this doesn't have any sort of cuts or simplification of PreSonus products. Just recently, Audiotonics acquired Slate Digital, and while nothing has changed for Slate Digital products yet, one of the big things that happened is the two main people in charge of Slate Digital, Stephen Slate himself and Fabrice Gabriel, the person behind the coding of the plugins, are no longer going to be associated with that company, and that's a big loss in my opinion. Recently, three big audio companies, Native Instruments, Isotope and Brainworks and Plugin Alliance merged together to create this sound-wide company that kind of is a new corporate structure for all three of these. And right out of this merger came several things that have happened. Native Instruments has retired Absinthe, no longer supporting or developing or selling Absinthe. Now, a lot of people have used this synth for years and years. It's been around for a couple of decades, so it's a big loss for some people. Isotope just recently, within the past week or so, ceased development of Trash 2, Break Tweaker, and Iris 2, no longer sold or developed by Isotope, as we can see right here. And Isotope also recently bought Exponential Audio, a reverb developer, and have recently decided to kill almost all of their reverb plugins. They're stopping development and sales of R2, R4, R2 Surround, Phoenix Verb, Phoenix Verb Surround, Nimbus, and the Excalibur Reverbs, basically only keeping two of the reverbs from the big catalog that Exponential Audio used to have. So in all of these purchases and acquisitions of these companies so far, we've seen Gibson buys a company, ceases development of the big product. Fender buys a company, we're not sure yet. Audiotonics purchased Lake Digital and the two people behind the company are gone. Soundwide merger happens and a bunch of products are cut out of, of each of these individual companies. The big problem with these mergers is that they tend to create cuts and less choices for the consumer or user, not really more. They're trying to sort of trim budgets, consolidate product lines. So when these mergers happen, if you have a tool in here that gets cut, you can use it for a while, but it will eventually not work anymore. And that is a big problem. We really haven't seen many mergers or acquisitions that have led to increased output and no cuts at all. So that's a big problem with these audio company mergers. They're happening more and more recently. And I understand these companies have to be profitable and run a business too. But as an end user of these products, it becomes problematic when they will no longer work in our DAW. So let me know what you think about some of these products not being developed, sold, or supported anymore. If you use some of these, let me know down in the comments section. Or if you have any other questions or comments, let me know down there. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already, so we can keep you in the loop as to what's coming up next. And I'll see you in the next one.